What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. We just finished our live stream reactions for Backlash this year, and I must say, this was a pretty enjoyable show. And we gotta give a special shout out to the fans in Lyon, France. You ladies and gents killed it, y'all gave the energy the entire time every single match y'all were chanting for every single move y'all were singing y'all were dancing y'all literally had the camera shaking multiple times throughout the show it was ridiculous how loud it was in there there was 11,000 plus people in there and it sounded like it was 30 it was fantastic you guys are amazing easily the best crowd of the year so far for wrestling if I had to choose, Puerto Rico last year at Backlash was, oh, well, the Backlash at, in Puerto Rico last year was really, that was like the best crowd of last year, honestly. I think Leon France may have edged them out just a bit, bro, because these guys, they didn't stop chanting. I'm pretty sure the show ended, they're still chanting. Y'all made every single match that much better. You guys killed it. Y'all the MVPs of this show. But there were some really good matches on here really good stuff we got to talk about first things first we're going to get into the meat and potatoes because you know what we're here to talk about we got to talk about the bloodline stuff with kevin owens randy orton versus solo and tamatanga and they started off the show with this match started off the show with this match and before they could even get into the actual match itself they started brawling the bell didn't even ring. They started brawling. Security's coming out there to break up people. You know, the, the referee's trying to get control over everything. It was total chaos. Nick Aldis comes out there and says, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Since y'all are not going to follow the rules here, it's not going to be no traditional tag team match, we're going to go ahead and make this a no disqualification, anything goes street fight match. Let's go. And the crowd was lit. And the chaos ensued. I love the fact that Nick Aldis did this because it makes sense. We knew going into this, this match is going to dissolve into straight chaos. And this exactly what happened. Uh, I, I, I love this. And all hell breaks loose. They start fighting in the crowd. They start fighting by the announcers area. It was just chaos. And majority, like the beginning half of this match, the bloodline was getting packed up by ko and randy orton they even brought out the the tools the, the trash can lids the kendos the chair shots i mean the chairs tomatonga's back was destroyed by some kendos this was just total chaos and then tomatonga got put through a table with a frog splash as kevin owens was on the ring apron he had a ring a table set outside laid tomatonga on it hit him with a a, a splash a frog splash through the from the top of the turn um the ring apron all the way to the uh through the table you know pretty much taking out tomatonga and then uh solo took out randy orton for a little bit he put him through the table um in the middle of the ring so now it, it, it came it, it turned into a one-on-one -on -one with kevin owens and tomatonga i mean uh Solo Sokoa, they start brawling, but Solo Sokoa gets the better of him. Then Tomatonga gets into the mix, and he starts brutalizing KO as they start to destroy this man by himself. They just packing him up until Randy Orton gets back into the mix, and uh, he ends up hitting him with an RKO. This was so fun, but the spot of this match, maybe even the spot of the night, Kevin Owens has Tomatonga in a in a uh, compromised position. There's chairs on the side by one of the turnbuckles. So, Kevin Owens would pick up a chair, smash Tomatonga in the back with it, then set it up. Then he would pick up another one, do the same thing, set it up. And you knew what he was doing. This is the spot where Kevin Owens, for whatever reason, it's like in his contract, you know the, the chair spot where they're lined up, there's three chairs lined up one way, three chairs lined up another way close to each other, and then he ends up usually being the one that falls on top of the chairs. That's the spot they were doing, but each time he would set up a chair, Kevin Owens would hit Tomatonga with it. So finally, he gets to the top rope, and 
He's about to try to throw, you know, throw him on there, but then Tomatonga tries to reverse it. And ultimately, and this is where I, I just, this was a holy shit moment. KO ends up hitting a brain buster to Tomatonga on the steel chairs. Oh my God. It was over. The match was done. Tomatonga died. It was done. I was like, all right, the match is over. He he killed him. As rightfully so, to get his revenge. He's about to, you know, the ref goes in. He goes for the cover, goes for the one, goes for the two. And then he gets pulled out by someone, obviously in uh, black attire this time. We didn't know who it was. Uh, a lot of people were thinking maybe it was uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob fought too. But no, it was Tonga Loa. Tamatonga's brought brother who showed up and stopped the the uh the pin situation. He saved the match. He saved his brother from being pinned. And then at that point, uh Tonga uh Tonga Loa picks up steel steps, hits Randy Orton with the steel steps because he's on the outside of the ring, and then he hits Kevin Owens with the steel steps. And then at that point, it was over because Solo ends up throwing Kevin Owens through threw a, a, just a standing chair, then hits him with the Samoan spike, and Solo Sokoa gets the one, two, three pin victory for the bloodline. And Solo Sokoa gets his first win since losing to John Cena last year. He got the pin on Kevin Owens, and the bloodline has is, is gotten even stronger with uh, Tonga Loa. Tama Tonga's brother. So now they have aligned themselves with uh, with Solo Sokoa and they stood tall and you see Paul Heyman trying to get them to stay back from Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is spitting up. He's selling it and they're trying to get him to stay back from Kevin Owens, you know, not to attack him. But the bloodline has gotten much stronger, bro. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they're going to be doing with uh, Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga because I love what they've been doing with Tama. He's he has this aggressiveness, this this wildness. So I want to see what they do with Tonga as well. This should be good. And Solo needed that win. Bloodline needed that win. It's gonna be very interesting to see what they do with the Bloodline going forward. Um, this was a real great match too. Great way to start off the show. Bailey versus Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton. Um, this was a pretty solid match. Uh, the crowd was energetic. Um, crowd definitely loved them. Some Tiffany Stratton, you know, the tippy time is a real thing. And she had a really good showing, uh, throughout this match. Uh, I love the fact that she had, she had some great offense on, uh, Bailey and Naomi and was really showing why she deserved to even be in that, uh, in that spot. And I do think at some point this year, you know, she may end up winning money in the bank. I don't think anyone would trip if she did win the women's money in the bank. Cause she's a fan favorite and she looked good out there. Um, at one point, uh, Bailey and Naomi ended up hitting like this modified version of the 1D on uh, Tiffany Stratton to kind of get her out the match. And then it became, towards the end, a one-on-one. -on -one. Now, here's where the ending of this match felt kind of, I don't know if it was rushed, they didn't have enough time, but it felt weird because the ending of this match, it was really Naomi, I end up, hit, end up rolling up Bailey, and then Bailey ended up reversing the roll-up for the one, two, three. And I was just like, the ending was so abrupt. The match was, it definitely picked up and I enjoyed it. But the ending just came out of nowhere. I was just, I was expecting at least Bailey hit her finisher or something. No, it was a roll-up win. It was a reverse roll-up. That's what it was essentially. So I was just like, I don't know if I would have ended it like that. I maybe, and I get they're not trying to give, I get, they're not trying to give Tiffany too many losses. They're not. That's why this whole situation happened with them pretty much hitting uh, Tiffany with this modified 1D and then pretty much it became them two. And you knew Bailey wasn't going to lose here. But it was just the, the pinning com combination. That whole sequence seemed a little bit rushed. Overall, solid match. Once again, crowd, they, they, they brought the energy. And boy, did they bring the energy for the next match we're going to talk about. But we also got to mention... Before the Jay and um, Damian Priest match, Jay's in the back, you know, warming up, you know, getting himself hyped up. And then you see Solo walk past him, look right at him. 
Then you see Tama Tonga walk past him, look right at him. Then you see uh, Tonga Loa, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. You see uh, Tonga Loa stare at him, look, you know, look at him, walk right past him. And then you see Paul Heyman look look at him and walk right past him. And I'm like, hmm. Hey, at first, I thought maybe they were going to interrupt in this match, but ultimately that didn't happen. But that's gonna, they're gonna, we're gonna get some interaction with Jay in the bloodline. I'm, I'm really, I'm, 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 this new version of the bloodlines, it's gonna be very interesting. So, see how that plays out. But we got the Jay versus Damian Priest match, and Jay coming through the crowd, bro. That was one of the coolest visuals. If you haven't seen it, the crowd was doing the J up and down, you know, it's me, Oos, day one ish. You had the lights. They had their phone lights out. They're doing it. You just see a wave and got the camera shaking. It's just one of the coolest visuals. If you haven't seen Jay's entrance it, tonight, well, this afternoon for Backlash, easily one of the coolest entrances, bro. Like, that shit was truly fantastic, and it's just, it's a testament to see how far Jay has come. Main event, Jay got that type of reaction. It was beautiful. I love that. Shout out to, once again, Leon France for showing out, man. That entrance was great. Um, This was a good back-and-forth match. I really enjoyed this match. Crowd was into it, as I expected, but then some shenanigans started happening, but this was different because JD had came out there to try to help Damian Priest, Damian Priest had found out and he was upset. And he was like, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Stop trying to help me. I can do this on my own. And it almost cost, um, almost cost Damian Priest the match. So the story they're telling here is Damian wants to do this on his own, but the members of the Judgment Day are still trying to essentially help and Damian doesn't want that. I love at one point during the match they were it was some back and forth kicks in uh in punches in the middle of the ring like different combinations like they Jay would kick him and then then um uh, Damien would kick him back it was it was really nice I like that back and forth the crowd was into the back and forth as well then Finn tried to to help Jay at uh towards the end of the match and once again Jay's trying to fight him off as well as you know try to, you know, keep applying the pressure to Damian Priest. And then at one point, it looked like Jay was about to win. He had covered uh, Damian Priest. But then JD, uh, <laughs> uh, JD McDonough ends up putting his bottom rope, putting his foot on the bottom rope, and the ref sees it. But they stopped the, the pin count. And that's when Jay, uh, Jay decided to take out um, JD. And he decided to take out... Um, Finn Balor, but ultimately, uh, Damien ends up hitting the South of Heaven from the top rope to Jay Uso, and uh, for the one, two, three, uh, victory. I mean, he wasn't kicking out of that. Maybe a normal one, but not from the top rope. You know, it, it was the match was pretty much over. The numbers game, um, you know, was you know something tough for Jay to overcome. And then after the match. JD and Finn Balor are trying to attack um, Jay Uso, but um, Damian Priest says he stops him. He pushes, pushes JD. He pushes Finn Balor. He's like, "Yo, stop that! What are y'all doing?" Then they go back trying to attack um, Jay once again, and then he pushes him back, and he gets in Finn Balor's face. He grabs him by his face, like, "Stop what I tell you. We're not doing that. We don't need to do that. Stop it, y'all. You stand here. You stand here, and we pose." So I like what they're doing here. They're, they're definitely creating this dissension. And Damian Priest is, you know, like, no, I don't need to do that. I already beat him. It's get, it seems like Damian Priest may be turning babyface soon. Because that's a babyface thing to do. He's in the heel group, but he's like, I, I, I wanted to beat him on my own. I'm not going to beat him up anymore. I already proved my point. So it's going to be very interesting. I do feel like Finn Balor may be a, a, the person that costs Damian Priest later down the line um the championship so we'll see how that played out but great match love the story that they're telling with that enjoyed it now the next match with the kabuki warriors versus uh jade and bianca I'm not gonna lie to y'all 
during this part of the stream, I was actually trying to get my food situated. So I, I was able to see their entrances. But at that point, I wasn't even paying attention to the match. because Not because I didn't want to. It's because I actually wasn't watching. I could hear it, but I was actually trying to get my food situated. Um, so the parts I was able to catch is towards the end. And I could hear the crowd in my headphones just going crazy through in, the entire time. I did see some people feeling like there was a lot of botches in this match. And, and you know... Uh, uh, I think Jay may have been having some trouble out there. Um, that's what I was seeing in the comment section. I'm not sure how true that was. Y'all let me know if that was the situation where Jade was, you know, um, struggling during the match. But I will say this, this last sequence with, with Kyrie saying how she was able to reverse it, flip her around and then get her into a finisher. I thought that was impressive strength wise to be able to move somebody effortlessly without dropping them that was pretty impressive um but ultimately the right people win yeah bianca hitting the kod on oscar on the Kyrie saying for the one two three the right people win the right uh the right team won in jade and bianca belair um like i said i didn't really get a chance to watch the match in its entirety but i did like that last sequence that they had um hopefully we'll see what they do with them and um uh, Who's gonna be their, you know, their opponents going forward? But this was this was okay for what I saw. So y'all let me know how y'all felt about the match because I didn't really see it as much. Um, so I can't really give my full opinion on it. But y'all let me know how y'all felt about the match. And last but not least, Cody versus AJ Styles. What am I to say? This match was amazing. Their entrances from the crowd was amazing. Everyone singing Cody's theme song was so great. The hype. The camera shaking while Samantha is introducing both wrestlers. The camera was shaking. Just fantastic. Even before they locked up, the cameras were shaking. This was such a good one. Good match. Loud, let's go Cody and AJ style chance. Um, at one point, um, AJ ends up dropping Cody on his neck and back onto the ring apron. Um... And earlier in the match, I, I believe AJ was targeting Cody's sh um, like shoulder. You know the the reports, or not even reports of the the concern that people were having with Cody uh, having his match and potentially getting injured on SmackDown against Carmella Hayes. You know they tried to play that up, but still that spot on that apron looked brutal on the neck and shoulder area. And then Cody returned the favor by picking up AJ Styles. And throwing him through the French announce table. Great moment there. Um, at one point, Cody kicked out of the burning hammer that AJ Styles delivered to him. Kicked out at one. Fantastic. He was hyping up. It was like super Cody. It was, it was a cool moment. Crowd was hyping up with him. And you can tell it was really Cody trying to hit the 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 crossroads and then aj styles always trying to lock in the uh styles class because you knew if he hit the styles class there was a good chance that cody wasn't going to kick out kick out so cody always trying to reverse it and and stop it and block it was great uh there was another nice move from cody it was it was a top rope um cody cutter from the top rope beautiful and then after that once he hit that he ends up hitting the um the crossroads on AJ Styles for the one, the two, the three. Crowd loved it. I love this match. This was great. And I want to see another one. Let's run it back. Cody versus AJ Styles. Maybe out of stipulation. Run it back. That was such a great match. Fantastic. Fan, even if that crowd wasn't there, they still put on a great match. But the crowd made it that much better. Overall, this was a fun show. This was a fun show. I really enjoyed this show. Um, Backlash um, under the Triple H era. They're, they're doing some good stuff. They're making Backlash, even though it's a B-level pay-per-view, in a sense, they're making it feel important. They're putting on uh, eight performances out there in the ring, and the crowd and the energy make it seem as if, if it's the biggest pay-per-view possible. Like they give the crowd gives it like WrestleMania vibes level of intensity and backlash doesn't seem like a throwaway pay-per-view anymore. The past two years they have been great. 
and i love this one this was a fantastic show i enjoyed it for what it was uh, i think on the review i said i would give this a solid i'll give this a solid nine out of ten bro it was like a nine out of ten show they were in and out this show didn't take too long it didn't drag you got to the matches you got to the good the good stuff that you wanted to see and that was it <clears throat> that's all and they were in and out loved it can't wait to see what other stories progress going forward but comment down below let me know what was your favorite match of the show what was your least favorite match of the show also what you rate the show on a scale of one to ten and i want to really ask y'all this question in comparison to last year's backlash in puerto rico which crowd was the best which crowd was better in your opinion because tonight leon france they showed out they showed out and i think they edged that uh puerto rico crowd from backlash i think they edged them just a little bit not by much but just a little bit but either way this crowd tonight was the best crowd wrestling crowd so far of the year so but i appreciate all love sport road to 50k and i'm still young speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace